We are talking about the culture shock and the culture difference, lifestyle, um, what you might meet as you travel around the world. Hello, my name is LC. I'm the author and the owner of the Vision Production. And on this channel, I talk about culture, traditions, lifestyle, and all in between and the food and everything. Mostly I talk about Zimbabwe and America because that's where I lived my life in both places. I lived almost a half now of my life, you know, give and take. So today though, I am going to bring you to the audience. I want to bring you to Korea, my culture shock where I lived in Korea. The first thing I would say actually is I arrived in Korea was not too far, was right there, was uh, <laughs> first, the people are different, very different, right? Uh, so it was a big culture shock, not like you are looking at like uh, a variety of uh, people, you know, I had just come from America. So in America was like, you are looking around, there's a variety of different people, you know, all kinds of people everywhere from all over the world. That's the way it was like. But when I arrived in Korea, it was totally different. It was a one, almost like a one set of people that I could see. And as I looked around, as we were driving or walking around, the language, everything was in Korean. So I didn't know what, what anything was saying. You know, nothing, nothing, zero. There was nothing that was translated into English. I don't know how it is now. That's been many years ago, over 30 years ago. So I don't know how it is now. But I know that at that time, they did not have much of anything translated into English. So that was very shocking. It's like if you don't have anyone that you are walking around with, uh, and you don't know the language, you are in a, a bit of some trouble, you know. <laughs> and as we arrive, I'm going to try and just see, trek back and just see how it was like. As we arrived to the home where we were uh, going to be, uh, we were received very well and, you know, we went inside the house. One of the culture things that I noticed there that was so... I'm not giving comparisons here, but I am going to compare because it's just what it is. You know, I'm going to give those comparisons somehow, which was very similar to African was, we were just told, uh, and just say, oh, sit down, you know? And um, when I looked, it was just like I'm at home. It was the floor, they had a mat there, something they put there for you to sit down. And, you know, it felt, um, so much like the African way. And then as we were sitting down there, we didn't sit long. The lady of the house, she stood up very quickly after the greetings and everything. She stood up and she went to the kitchen for a minute. She came back very fast. <laughs> when, when she came back, she came back with this big bowl, like the, the mixing bowl type of uh, size of a plate. I think it was a plate. And she came back and it was filled up to the top, you know, with cut tomatoes, really nice, good tomato, cut up. And it was all filled up there. And she came and she set it there. She was very happy. And I sat down there and I was looking and I thought, tomatoes, why, <laughs> why there's a big uh, plate of tomatoes in front of me and what, what are we supposed to do with tomatoes? That was my thing, like, what are we supposed to do with tomatoes? I never in my life seen anything like that, that a person would come and give you tomatoes. So after a minute, I was with a, another person who had lived there for a little bit, who knew the cultures and the tradition. And the, uh, she said, let's eat. Then I thought, eat what? <laughs> she said, Tom the tomatoes. And I thought, oh, okay. So we started eating. Honestly, the whole process is I'm eating tomato. I know a tomato so I can eat it. But as I was eating it, I was totally shocked. I didn't know 
what the tomato meant, why were we given tomatoes? Out of all the things a person can give, don't they have, you know, something to drink, something, you know, just something, you know, a fruit, you know, other than a tomato. Why were we given a tomato? So I, I, I could not ask at that moment, why are we being given a tomatoes to eat? We, I just, you know, go ahead and, and eat something edible. So I ate. But after a while, I asked a question to someone. I said, you know, we were given tomatoes to eat. What was, why were we given tomatoes? What was the reason for that? And uh, the person answered to me. And he said, well, in Korea, uh, tomatoes are very, very valuable. And tomatoes are like a rare food where most people, they pay a lot of money to get tomatoes. And when they give you tomatoes, it's like this big welcoming that they are doing. And on this, I want to say to anybody who is listening to this, if you are Korean or you know a lot more about Korean, which I really don't, you know, I'm just saying my experience and my, um, what I experienced when I was there, that, that's about all what I'm saying. Uh, you should just comment below and let me know if what I'm saying was accurate or there's a lot missing in that story that uh, tomatoes are very valuable and they are not seen easily in Korea and they are not, maybe the growing of tomatoes there, it's maybe a little bit difficult, I'm not sure. But, you know, they welcome people, you know, maybe they choose at some point to welcome people and they give them tomatoes. So that was really amazing. In African tradition, we have a chicken. And anybody who don't know that, I have a video that you can watch. The links are there below. And I talk about, you know, how we welcome a guest, you know. So um, you can find those videos. The other thing, too, that actually, as I lived there a little longer, and because I was really with the locals and the people and, you know, uh, going to different places, you know, doing what I was doing there, I found out that the Koreans have curiosity of people that they haven't seen. Uh, so being a black person in Korea was a huge deal, but it wasn't a huge deal as if like, oh, we have a black person, you know, no. It was a big deal like, whoa, there's a black person. You know, like they want to come, they want to scrutinize you, they want to see you, they want to see what kind of a person are you, in a sense, you know, even though we know we are all people. But we also know that if people never really were exposed to certain type of people, uh, sometimes you act as a little bit strange, you know, but not in a bad way. Um, I remember when I was a little girl growing up in the country, um, one time we saw this white guy, and I remember me and my friends, we just ran to him and we surround him and we used every English word we could use to, to speak to him, to try and just have a conversation with him. It wasn't because we are saying anything about him. It was a person that we, we are not familiar to see in our surrounding. And it wasn't a normal thing for us to see a person like him. So we were all just like, um, I would say what, excited or uh, um, shocked or whatever i don't know you know so that's what i felt in korea like the people when they see you they are they are genuine surprised to see you and they are genuine wanting to know about you but not in a way like they are saying you are anything other than who you are but in a genuine way i i really can honestly say that 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 was my my own um i would say what um experience and the other thing too that is that when they when you are going into their homes they they are not like afraid of people or afraid of strangers around them so much so maybe i want to think maybe it's safer in korea more safer than I would think in uh, America, definitely, because in America, I could not, 
you know, you knock at the door, they want to know who you are, they look on the people, they, you know, and most of the time they wouldn't open their door. But in Korea, they will open the door, they will bring you inside. And another aspect, again, I found out as I lived there a little long, was always they receive you, they bring you inside, then they give you something to eat, to drink, something to just show that you are a guest here and we are welcoming you. Another shocking thing that I found out in Korea was the uh, asking of your age. It's very common for them and it's very natural for them when they meet a new person to find out what is your age. Me sorry, Monica. You know, what is your age? They want to know that, you know. Um, and then again, I didn't understand why these people, they always have to ask you your age. They just met you. <laughs> why are they asking your age, you know? And I found out one of it is because they want to know if I have to respect you or you have to respect me. So they want to find out, you know, what your age for that reason. They want to find out what is your age. Uh, and I think um, this is like, I think what I have for you today about Korea. And I think I'll make some more videos. Since I was just talking, I realized actually maybe I need to make a nice good comparison between uh, Zimbabwe, Korea, and America. And just to see those differences that plays in there because to me it was very interesting because in America, I was able to speak, I, I met diverse of people, I was more like, I would say, I was more like I could feel more at home, but in reality, my reality was actually when I went to Korea, I felt that more than I felt in America. And for the Americans, I don't mean anything, <laughs> any harm here. I'm just saying this is how I felt because the little practices that I was familiar with, I found them in Korea than I could find them here. You know, even the greeting was more like more very uh, formal, you know, in America was most of the time, hey, how are you doing? Like they, they know me, you know, like they have seen me, they already know me. Most of the people, they didn't know me, you know. So to me, it was like, whoa, person is just say, hey, how are you doing? You know, they never met me, you know. There's a certain way of, like, <laughs> greeting, you know. That's what I was familiar with. So in Korea, I kind of felt this, like, a warm feeling, like, a, absolutely, like, I'm, I was at home, you know. So it was a, it was a beautiful uh, feeling. And not all the Koreans, I realized, too, that... Sometimes when you meet Koreans in, in uh, America, they are a little bit different, you know, they are not the same. But when you are in their hometown, most of the time, they really are very different too. They, their mannerism, everything is very different. And today, like I said, this is all I have. I thank you for coming and please don't forget to subscribe and also ring the notification bell so you cannot miss when I bring another video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.